Hey everyone, welcome back. Derek here from Laughix. Got another video for you guys today. So today I got in here uh, probably one of these common ones you guys have seen for, oh, if you ever go to a store or anything, even from back in a little bit of the day, I guess, probably a few years ago would be a day, but they're nice SanDisk uh, SSDs here. And I have one in here for data recovery because who would have guessed, right? It's in here for repair, so we need to get the data off. We need to extract data and see what's going on. Now, we look on the back here, and we can actually see like the product information. We can see that it's like a 128 gig uh, SSD, so it's a pretty small one, so maybe it's a little older. Now, whenever you have uh, an SSD in general, for it, you need to see really what the problem is, what the symptoms are, right? You want to see what's going on. But if it's older, and if it's like 128 gig or something, that means it's, it's, it's a smaller size, and usually a smaller size on how SSDs usually work usually isn't good for longevity overall for it because for SSDs, they will eventually fail. It's usually just uh, depends on how much you write to the NAND itself there. Um, usually the quality of the NAND, the quality of the controller, a lot of stuff really matters when you buy an SSD. Now, um, let's just actually go ahead and see first though what's going on. And let's go ahead and plug it in, see what we get, see if we even see anything in the first place, see what our problem is. Um, so oh, I got my sled here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Oops, I need an adapter. Yeah, I need my adapter for my adapter. So you sell these MacBooks that need a USB-C dongle adapters for everything, but I'm already using a USB-C for something else. So all these computers to the, in which you switch USB-C, but we only got one USB-C port and a nice motherboard. And Cortana's agreeing with me there too. So let's see. So we plug it in and we don't see anything, right? So let's go ahead and check our, I guess I can even bring it here. I don't think it's worth it because I don't think anything comes up. So we check our disk management and we don't see anything actually pop up. Nothing happens at all. Let's see if the drive is even reading whatsoever. So we get a light here. The light indicator at least means something. Uh, if it's blinking, that's a little bit better. Let's turn it on. Let's turn it off. I don't know why they have it on this side, which is kind of funny. Because you usually want to see in the front to see if it's even doing anything. It looks like nothing's responding at all. So let's take this out because uh, looks obviously it's here for that reason. So we see that the drive at least tries to power or is recognizing and there's no um, activity whatsoever with the drive itself. The, the, so what does that usually mean? So when you have uh, any type of SSDs here, they have a controller. Well, I guess let's pop it first. They don't make this one fun to open. Like, well, man, so the latches, there's no screws. It just latches everywhere. Okay, we're good. So when you have an SSD, you have something like this. Oh, I'll stop this on my screen, it's really bothering me. So when you have an SSD, you have something like this, you have a PCB board. Um, they usually put it in one of these casings here. Sometimes they, they can act as like more like a heat sink or something, but uh, we have this out, we pull it out, and we see there are many uh, flash. Usually the big ones are a big, uh, they're NAND itself there. And it looks like we have one, two, three, and we have four total, if you count the one that has a sticker on it, we have four total um, NAND chips for only 128 gig. So that's fun, I guess. <laughs> that's gonna be fun to deal with. But usually the thing that, that gives you a problem if it's coming on but nothing is actually showing up, there's no activity, is there's usually a problem with the controller. If we would see the device have no light whatsoever, that means there would be a short along the circuit there, but we know these power's going in. And we can prove the power is going in, why? Because we have a thermal cam here, and let's, let's go under that. Okay, so I have my thermal cam up, um, and we want to see. I think you guys want to see a little bit better way, so let me plug it in. Uh, I guess I could do the sled first. So here's our sled. You might be able to tell. If I plug it in there, it's going to get hot most likely on the other side. So maybe this is kind of point. Oh, did I have it off? Oh, I have it off. <laughs> it's cool. So watch this. So when you turn it on, it's going to show heat going, right? You see that? And that's the controller on the other side of it. It gets so warm from there that there is a, there's a problem. Uh, so it looks like the controller has an issue, so if I even take this out and I show, flip it real quick, you can see the controller is still really hot and then it kind of goes and dies. So this means uh, there's a clear problem with the controller itself. There's a communication issue with it. Something's going on there. Um, we can obviously check for, for local damage, but usually there isn't any local damage if you can get power to this controller itself because it's going. But the controller pretty much has like a handshake with the NAND and we're all happy you can see your data after that. So, but unfortunately in this case we can't. So what do we do from here? Well, we can't use Windows really to help us anymore. We need to use our brain and we need to use some tools. Let's go under the microscope. Let's just take a look at it real quick and go from there. Okay, so we're gonna put this under the microscope. All we're doing is just taking a look to see what we have and see if there's anything obvious, but you know, just for fun. So we have a controller here. We have a SanDisk controller and there's a little engraving on it. That's pretty much the model of it. 
And if we look, we can also see there's a bunch of NAND around. Like we said before, we have one, we have two under the sticker, which is fun because they put it right on the sticker. And then we have three, and then we have the last one, which is four. Now, since we have four, um, you're like, well, why does it even matter? Well, it's, it's a lot of different ones just for a very small drive itself there. And what do we need to do? Um, we need to pretty much replicate at least what the controller is doing. Now, um, there's two ways we can do this. We can either get a donor replacement for the controller. That's usually the best way to do that. Um, and the reason why we would do that is we, we believe the controller has an issue, right? And that's usually the number one thing. If we can't get a controller, if you can't get a donor, then what you need to do is you need to remove each one of these NANDs and we need to read them um, uh, as pretty much a unit. So we have a, we have a tool that helps read uh, flash and NAND there and we have something that acts as a controller so you can read directly from there um, and replicate really what the controller is doing to read data and then to extract it. And you need a solution for it as well. So in this case, uh, that's the worst thing you want to do because that's a, well, that's the, the last, or that's the worst case scenario if you do it that way because why? Well, it's a lot more riskier. You have to remove stuff, you have to do more things, and the controller, and to act as a controller, it's difficult to work with the, with the drive to replicate what the controller is doing. The f if we didn't have the controller, then we wouldn't have a choice, right? And let's see what we have to do. But, well, since we're a tech shop, right, we got lots of drives and lots of other things here for us. And that's why we have a donor. So great, we have a donor here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can replicate the controller. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it because I couldn't find the chip individually. So I got one that should be exactly the same. But we need to check that to make sure it is because the controller has to be exact because it's the controller, right? And it's pretty much the brain of the whole entire uh, device there. So let's go ahead and see if it's pretty much the same one and if we can just extract it and then replace it, see if it works. Okay, so I got my donor out here. It even has a sticker in the same spot. So that's always a good sign. But we need to confirm it. We need to go under the microscope and see if it's exactly the same one. So let's do that. So even though the drives may look similar or even be a different color, like green and blue, they need to have the same controller. So let's see, we have 20-8200. 369. I hope you guys can read that. I'm you know, under my microscope. I don't know if I can make that better. But we have 20-82-00369-1. Perfect. And we need to know where our spots are. This is going this way on it. You can see the little guy with the legs here is going there. So let's go ahead and remove this one and then we will go and take it off. All right, so let's go ahead and first we're just going to remove our donor controller. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. Let's take it up. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> now, um, once we remove that one, we're gonna put it to the side and then we have to remove the one on our patient drive here. So um, now when we do this one, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's a similar process obviously, but it's gonna be a little bit different because we need to clean it. We need to make sure the, the solder is gonna be good. We're gonna make sure all the pads are gonna be nice and healthy um, and be a good connection because that's what's really important. And we have to align this perfectly. You can see the pins are very precise. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we put it in and then we can go ahead and see if it's going to work. So let's test it out. So we plug it in. All right. So go over. We've seen our disk management. Um, it did also pop up as well that there is a, there's a drive uh, plugged in, which is good. It shows NTFS. Looks like there is Windows that's installed on here. So let's go ahead and bring it over. Um, yeah, we got a file explorer there and should be uh, one... 28. Oh, okay. So there's some. So let's click it. Let's open it. And we see some program files, the data. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on recovering the data from a SanDisk uh, SSD. If you did, please do like it. It just helps a lot. Subscribe for more content. And again, we're located in the DC metro area, Northern Virginia, and we do a lot of repairs. We do data recoveries and liquid spill repairs on MacBooks, logical repairs, all of other fun stuff. You can go ahead and check out our other videos for when we do that. Um, if you're out of state, you can also mail in your device. We have our link in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed watching, and see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Take care, guys. Bye.